I think, is, how do you distinguish between the genuine joy and pleasure of uh, acting in love or just receiving pleasure from As an the, addiction? Uh, yes. Mm. No. I don't know. Well, that's maybe how I I'm distinguish. Maybe I'm totally wrong, but it, um, it looks as if some spirits were rewarding me Yes. Through their addictions yeah. being met. And yes. I, if Which you don't happens. mind, I'll explain. Yep. Um, I've been uh, doing quite a lot of uh, work in the past months. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was quite a lot of pleasure and rewards mm -hmm. because I thought I was working a lot. Mm -hmm. Until, and in the process, I think, I think, I'm not sure I've met my soulmate. <laughs> and then uh, it all stopped. Um, when I started working on my fear of spirits and literally the n in the next hour everything went down the drain and it's still extremely hard and it's been months since then. Yep. Um, so I'm doubting now that all the joy and rewards I had received mm -hmm. was not just them rewarding me mm -hmm. and uh, every good news I thought I had was mm -hmm. just was a figment uh, of imagination, it seems now. Well, it was f just fake, yeah. actually. Because so I've realized that I, I'm just a puppet. Because every time now, I, I, I know that uh, once I've triggered them, they... So it's as if they, they were quite happy with me working on whatever yeah. that I thought was quite important, actually. But when I started uh, coming a bit closer t to them, <laughs> hop... Uh, <laughs> so... Well, it's not very funny, actually. <laughs> no, it's not funny. <laughs> Let's look at what's going on. Um, for the majority of us, when we begin this process, we don't realise that the majority of times we think we're receiving pleasure or joy, we're actually having our addictions met. And unfortunately, spirits are very hooked into you retaining having your addictions met because that's how they get their addictions met. So there is a codependency that develops between spirits and ourselves with regards to addictions. And a, and a spirit will, under pretty much all circumstances, if they are earthbound spirits, and there's 20 billion earthbound spirits around the earth at any one point in time, they will, if they wish, use their, your addictions to get their addictions met. So, for example, with regard to your fears, if you're suppressing your fears, certain fears that you have, and one fear you have is that you'll never be with your soulmate, right? and those kind of fears are often frequently the case with every person. You know, we're worried that the, that the person we're with isn't the, I, what we view as our ideal. And, uh, and so what we finish up doing is we finish up having a lot of these unexpressed fears. And spirits know that if all we need to do, is, all they need to do, is give you nice feelings about those particular fears to make them go away, and you'll pretty much do what they want you to do. They know that. And in that moment, you might receive what you would call joy or pleasure in that moment. However, if the long-term results are suffering or pain, if the long-term results are suffering or pain, then that indicates that the original pleasure was not driven by real soul-based joy. It was driven by an addiction. So whenever you have something that you initially feel is pleasurable, but in the long term it turns out painful, one of the things that you can look at is this issue of what's going on. And for the majority of us, we are addicted. We have a heap of addictions. Wanting our pleasures to be fulfilled when many of our pleasures are not actually pleasurable in the long run. You'll actually feel the harmful effect of the addiction in the long run. In other words, you'll eventually feel the pain and suffering that comes from following something that initially was pleasurable, but ev eventually ends up quite painful. Now, if I give you some examples of this in terms of day-to-day -day living. When a, a person normally gets their cup of tea or coffee in the morning, they initially believe that uh, this is a pleasurable experience. Yeah? And they feel that every time they have their kapha, that feels good, that feels good for them, makes them feel alive, makes them feel a number of different things. But 
the majority of people who become addicted to tea and coffee and even just minor substances like this that are legal to take, and when they pass into the spirit world, they no longer can have that addiction met. In other words, you can't drink a cup of tea in the spirit world. And you can't drink a cup of coffee in the spirit world. And so then what happens is they, they're going, where's my cup of tea? Where's my cup of coffee? And now, all of a sudden, the so-called pleasurable experience that they had all of their life now becomes very painful. They have a lot of these addictions, physical addictions I'm talking about in this case, not, not in this case, I'm talking about all sorts of addictions here. But in the example I'm giving is a physical addiction. We have a physical addiction that drives our behaviour. And when we meet that physical addiction, we feel a level of pleasure. But what is the results in the long run is the question. Now, a person who drinks a lot of coffee and a, or a lot of tea in the long run, generally they'll probably put on some weight. They'll generally um, find stress very difficult to deal with without their tea or coffee. They'll find every time they feel stressed, they'll go to a tea or a coffee in order to alleviate their stress and so forth. And this is an indication that it's an addiction being met that's causing their so-called pleasure rather than just the pleasure of having that particular thing, whatever that thing is. Let's look at another example. The average male on the planet under 30 years of age would believe that having a long series of uh, multiple relationships with different women is a good thing. All right? By the time, if he continues that lifestyle until he's 80 years of age, he'll find himself to be very lonely and have a lot of people very angry with him. That's the long-term effect of that addiction that he thought was pleasurable right at the beginning that's not pleasurable at the end of his life. That's an indication that it was an addiction that he was looking after when he wanted a long seri a series of relationships with different women. It wasn't something that was a part of his desires in a pure sense. And we could bring up lots and lots of illustrations like that. Even from an emotional perspective, we can bring up these illustrations of what happens in terms of what you believe somebody is giving you. For example, if uh, many people are addicted to feeling good about themselves because they actually feel quite bad about themselves. And so what they, what they do is they allow other people to pro project at them that they're good people. And in fact, they only spend time with other people who think they're good. Right? Now, in this process, they get to feel good about themselves. But if you put them in isolation, away from the normal people who give them all of these feelings, they go downhill very rapidly in terms of how they feel about themselves. That's an indication that what the so-called pleasure was was just an addictive experience that they were looking for. So what I'm suggesting to you is that every single addiction that you satisfy, that initially you believe brings you pleasure and joy, is in the long run going to create the pain and suffering. And the pain and suffering is telling you that the original so-called pleasure and joy wasn't real. It was just an addiction. It was an addiction being satisfied. Now, spirits want you to satisfy your addictions particularly when i say spirits i'm talking now about the earthbound spirits who have yet to actually leave the earth and the reason why they're yet to leave the earth is because they don't want to go to the spirit world where most of their addictions can't be met and so what they do is they stay on earth and they influence people to do things on earth so that they can share in the addictive feelings and still have many of their feelings met through this process and so they will leverage any one of your personal emotional injuries in order to have their particular addictions met. And this is what's been going on with yourself. They've been leveraging your own emotional injuries that you're not aware of yet or that you don't want to face yet and using them to get their addictions met. And that will always, in the long term, create pain and suffering, not only for you, but also for them in the long run. 